Good morning. My name is A.J. Bauckham, and I'm the Executive Director for PROMO, Missouri's statewide advocacy group for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. I'm here today because we are witnessing efforts by members of the Missouri House and other groups to continue pushing House Bill 2051, the aptly named Don't Say Gay Bill, in order to continue rallying support and hopefully see that same bill reintroduced next year. PROMO and our allies call for the immediate withdrawal of this bill. The life of gay youth in schools is not a political football. We already know not enough is being done to address bullying in schools. But for too many years, gay youth have been caught in the middle. The Missouri chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics today, in the Post-Dispatch, in their editorial, referenced a school climate survey recently conducted. In that survey of 7,000 LGBT youth, 85% experience verbal harassment. 40% experience physical harassment, and 20% are directly assaulted. These types of incidents lead to isolation and lead to the wave of gay teen suicides across the country. Missouri has a chance to make a difference. The 4,000 plus people who weighed in on our petition get it. Don't say gay bill would only serve to further alienate students at a vulnerable time remove nearly all support mechanisms through gay straight alliances, and only render them further subject to isolation. Just yesterday, a bullying bill, House Bill 1049, was held over rather than continued discussion of adding a list of students most often targeted for bullying in the school environment. It is our understanding that the bill sponsor would rather pull the bill than allow for gay youth to be specifically protected under this bill. I know the frustration and backlash that many of these legislators may face in deciding to directly address the gay issue. However, efforts like the Don't Say Gay Bill do nothing but harm today's youth and serve no effort other than to stigmatize and shame. With that, we respectfully ask that the bill sponsors take a long look at this bill, what it actually does, withdraw the bill, and come up with true solutions that meet the needs of all youth, including the gay ones. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Representative Stacey Newman. Good morning, and thank you for being here. Um, I represent uh, District 73, which is Clayton, parts of Richmond Heights, and uh, Maplewood in St. Louis County. I'm also the chair of the House Progressive Caucus, and I am very proud to stand here with my colleagues from both sides of the aisle who are asking the 20 bill sponsors to withdraw their bill, House Bill 2051. Last week, we 38 of us, the Progressive Caucus, House Progressive Caucus, including three additional Democratic representatives, sent a bill to all, or sent a letter to all 20 uh, sponsors, leadership, the co-sponsors of House Bill 2051, asking them to withdraw their support. Today, we're asking them to withdraw the bill, to go a step further and do it in the name of all kids in Missouri. As A.J. Bachelman mentioned, uh, there are very serious ramifications to this bill. Not only will educators and counselors and administrators not be able to even talk about sexual orientation in schools under House Bill 2051, it seriously affects the over 80 gay straight alliances that are current in um, high schools throughout the state. In fact, I represent one that is extremely vocal, Clayton High School. I'm very proud that these kids uh, stand up every opportunity that they can, and they support each other. And I say gay, straight. I mean both of them together, and whatever that, that, that is needed. And I'm also very proud that tomorrow morning they are doing their own media event in Clayton High School. Um, in the community, before school, they have full support of their school district and full support of the community. Again, asking the bill sponsors to withdraw their bill. I don't have to remind you as a parent and as a grandparent that we're talking about a serious matter. We're talking about all of our kids. And in fact, we, we do not need to see, we need to see more support for all kids, not just, not, not just those who, you know, um, should be invisible. And I'm really saddened, but I'm also heartened by the fact that uh, last week the Sioux City, Iowa newspaper, after a tragedy in their own community of a 14-year-old, ran a complete editorial and cartoon on the entire front page of their newspaper. 
asking and stating that bullying stops here now. I'd like to see that happen in Missouri. We don't need the headlines, but we certainly don't need legislation that is mean and that doesn't protect our kids. Thank you. My friend, Trevor, who represents Zach Wyatt. All right. Well, session, as we all know, is quickly coming to a close this year. But as you all know also, I will be leaving my political life behind for sunscreen, my ties, and the sun. Um, after making the decision to go to Hawaii, I began to think what type of mark I have left on the Missouri legislature. I kept coming back to the question on whether or not I had done enough to make lives for Missourians better. I know that I've done a few things, but none big enough to make the impact that I set out to make. Looking back on my short political career, there are two things that I've done and still have deep regrets for doing them. One being the first time I was interviewed about school bullying while, campa while campaigning, and the second being my no vote on the amendment regarding the Missouri Non-Discrimination Act last year. After my announcement that I was going to run for office, I was called to give an interview about a pressing issue that was going on within our school system today. That issue was school bullying. I was so excited it was my first interview on any issue uh, in regards to my campaign. The, things, the thing that I did wrong was see what the Republican stance was on the issue. I didn't truly think about the issue and how I had been myself even a victim of school bullying. I actually can now say that I went against my beliefs and I didn't lead on this issue, instead I followed. And leadership is actually what we need right now. Since the founding of my party, individual equality and freedoms have been its foundation. The foundations of any free society are individual rights and the responsibilities that come with them. This year I've gotten a chance to truly look at my life. As we, as we all know, political life is like living in a glass house and everything is known about you. I have come to realize that living in that glass house, I have even been able to see things about my life that I have kind of hidden away, even from myself. I will not lie to myself anymore about my own sexuality. It has probably been the hardest thing to come to terms with. I have always ignored it, didn't even think about it, or want to talk about it. I have not been immune to it. I hear the comments, usually snide ones, about me. I am not the first or last Republican to come out. I have just gotten tired of the bigotry being shown from both sides of the aisle on gay issues. Being gay has never been a Republican or Democrat issue, and it should never be. With national attention on the Missouri House of Representatives in regards to House Bill 2051, I'm compelled to still speak out against colleagues and especially the special interest groups who have pushed this bill forward. Students need to feel safe when they go to school and be able to speak with teachers counselors and administrators when they're getting bullied. This bill will make that illegal. Students need not be challenged with yet another law handed down by government officials in Jefferson City. Over the past weekend, I have to say the outpouring of support from, for standing up against House Bill 2051 has been very heartwarming. I am happy to say that I've been receiving letters of support from around our great state. These letters range from others telling me their personal stories to just letters of support of having the courage to take a stand on this, uh, this horrible bill. This is why today I'm here to ask members of my party who support or signed onto House Bill 2051 to withdraw their support. We as a body need to step back and truly address issues that are causing our schools to continue to fail. <coughs> House Bill 2051 addresses no such thing. This, is, this may be a heavy lift for many of you, but if I can save one kid from hurting themselves or possibly taking their life, then I have done my job as a representative. I'm still the same person I was when I woke up this morning, and I will be the same person when I go to bed tonight. Today, I ask you all to lead, to stand up for freedom and individual rights. Today, I ask you to stand with me as a proud Republican, a proud veteran, and a proud gay man who wants to protect all kids addressing bullying in our school.